One of the most common forms of laziness is staying busy. If you can't make up your mind decisively, then you'll never learn to make money anyway. Well, keep that attitude and you'll learn nothing. Keep the attitude that I'm the problem and what choices do you have? Well, if you don't pay me more or show me more respect and teach me, I'll quit. Well put. Rich Dad said. And that's exactly what most people do. They quit and go looking for another job, a better opportunity, and higher pay, actually thinking that this will solve the problem. In most cases, it won't. So what should I do? I asked. Just take this measly 10 cents an hour and smile. Rich Dad smiled. That's what the other people do. But that's all they do, waiting for a raise thinking that more money will solve their problems. Most just accept it, and some take a second job working harder, but again accepting a small paycheck. I sat staring at the floor, beginning to understand the lesson Rich Dad was presenting. I could sense it was a taste of life. Finally, I looked up and asked, so what will solve the problem? This, he said, leaning forward in his chair and tapping me gently on the head. This stuff between your ears. It was at that moment that Rich Dad shared the pivotal point of view that separated him from his employees and my poor dad and led him to eventually become one of the richest men in Hawaii, while my highly educated but poor dad struggled financially all his life. It was a singular point of view that made all the difference over a lifetime. America today is less a democracy and more an oligarchy. I think the reason most fail in the first five years is due to lack of experience and lack of capital. The reason the one survivor often fails in the second five years isn't due to lack of capital, but lack of energy. The pattern of get up, go to work, pay bills, get up, go to work, pay bills. People's lives are forever controlled by two emotions, fear and greed. For example, one dad had a habit of saying, I can't afford it. The other dad forbade those words to be used. He insisted I ask, how can I afford it? One is a statement, and the other is a question. One lets you off the hook and the other forces you to think. If you take on debt personally, make sure it's small. If you take on large debt, make sure someone else is paying for it. Learn. Unlearn. Relearn. As a person who has looked at the world from both the left and the right sides, I can honestly say the world looks much different depending on which side you are on. I know many people who are poor because they are neither good students nor good teachers. The single most powerful asset we all have is our mind. If it is trained well, it can create enormous wealth seemingly instantaneously. An untrained mind can also create extreme poverty that can crush a family for generations. In Many of you were given two great gifts your mind and your time. It is up to you to do what you please with both. Whenever I feel that people aren't smiling at me, I simply begin smiling and saying hello. People who sell their house on their own must not value their time much. Why would I want to save a few bucks when I could use that time to make more money or spend it with those I love? What I find funny is that so many poor and middle class people insist on tipping restaurant help 15 to 20 percent, even for bad service, but complain about paying a broker 3 to 7 percent. 
They enjoy tipping people in the expense column and stiffing people in the asset column. That is not financially intelligent.